Welcome to Club E. Hi, I am Rick Bremacomb of Bremacomb and Associates. I am your architect of business growth and will work with you to unlock your potential and amplify the scale of your company. Today, we are talking about hard learned lessons from a CEO. But first, I want to thank our sponsors, Irish Titan, an e-commerce and web development firm, Highland Bank, a locally owned community bank, Romaine Berg, a digital marketing agency, Schweigman, Lumberg, Wusner, an intellectual property law firm, and Voyager U, your gateway for building an independent lifestyle. All right, before we get started, let's have you subscribe and like our Club E channel that allows us to deliver better content to you. I appreciate you doing that. And then also a reminder that you can catch Club E on your favorite podcast platform, whether that be Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, or many others. With that, I'd like to introduce today's guest. Welcome, Glenn Dahl. Glenn is CEO of Apex North. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Glenn's contact information is in the comments section below for those folks who are watching the video. For those folks who are listening uh, via podcast, it's Glenn, G-L-E-N, Dahl, D-A-L-L, at Apex, A-P-E-X, North Coaching. Dot com. Again, Glenn Dahl at apexnorthcoaching.com. All right. Um, Glenn and I have known one another for several years. Uh, Jeff Redman, who we interviewed recently, also is somebody who I've interacted with uh, many times over the years. Jeff and Glenn are uh, joining up to offer an opportunity to see Sharon Susco and hosting Sharon as she delivers a CEO and leadership team workshop on April 26, 2022. We're going to talk about that workshop a little later, but Glenn, first let's start and have you tell us a little bit about yourself, your firm, and the various activities that you're up to these days. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rick. So uh, just so neither of us get in trouble, uh, when Shannon is here at the end of April, it's Shannon. And um, so... Rick, uh, Apex North Coaching, Business Coaching, is an enterprise that we've started four years ago, and we work with CEOs, leadership teams on building a, a strong vision, a strategy, and executing on that using a, a number of different frameworks, one of which we've, we've kind of brought together, we call it the North Star Way. Along with that, we also do work with leadership coaching, executive coaching, uh, some startup work as well, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So, uh, Glenn, your background um, in uh, getting to know you uh, over the years, and then also uh, talking about uh, your career journey. So, uh, quite interesting story um, about what you've done, accomplished, and the various things that that you've uh, gone through and experienced over your career. Uh, I find it interesting that you started working on an assembly line, and then you came up through the sales and marketing ranks, and then eventually became CEO of a publicly traded company, now coaching other CEOs. How did all that happen? And tell us a little bit more about uh, your uh, life and career journey. Yeah, Rick, I always, I always think of it kind of like mountain climbing. I, I grew up uh, in a lower middle class suburb outside of Detroit. I lost my father at an early age. And my neighborhood, the, the, the pinnacle of uh, your career was getting a job on a good job on an assembly line. And I actually ended up working, helping to build Ford Broncos on an assembly line uh, pretty back in the day. And um, but what I, once I found is once I was there, I kept seeing you know, other people within uh, the, the auto industry and you know, who were the bosses and the leaders. And I, I aspired to keep moving up into those roles and I, I eventually did. And uh, I kind of kept that philosophy the whole way. Every time I would reach that next mountaintop, I'd get up there and, and after a while, I'd start looking around and say, wow, there's a bigger mountain to climb. And I would set my sights on that and do what I needed to do to reach that. And eventually, yeah, I, I got to a place where I would never would have imagined as a kid that I was the CEO of a publicly traded company. And tell us a little bit about the picture as your backdrop there. Uh, obviously, climbing and hiking is important to you. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I, I really do love the outdoors. I love keeping fit, uh, hiking and cycling. And to me, um, this person over here represents the, the CEO, the head of the organization, and, and they're on top of their mountaintop and they're looking out into the horizon. 
and seeking that next mountaintop. And if you can see in the photo, it's a little fuzzy, right? It's a little unclear and they're, they're trying to say, where do I wanna go next? And that's really one of the things I really enjoy and love about what I get to do now is I work with those CEOs and their leadership teams to help unlock that vision. What is the next mountaintop? What's the next level they want to take their business to? And I have found over time that the more compelling we can make it, the more emotional and the more thrilling, it really ignites the team and, and can lead to some really fantastic business growth. So uh, living in uh, Minnesota, um, obviously there's limitations to things you can do uh, for a large part of the year. So how do you get your outdoor fix in during the winter and or do you travel so you can do your hiking and biking elsewhere over the winter time? Yeah, Rick, um, that's another advantage of, of being uh, in the career I have now is having some flexibility to be able to travel to some more Southern climates during the winter and take care of some of those activities. I actually uh, have just completed my second leadership retreat that I host down in Costa Rica. And that was just a couple of weeks ago. And myself and my CEO clients were able to do a lot of mountain biking, uh, a lot of climbing. We were up at some pretty high altitude. So that was pretty thrilling. Cool. Cool. So yeah. speaking of uh, CEOs, uh, again, uh, you're a CEO of a publicly traded company, which has its own challenges and, and wrinkles and, and a unique experience that um, uh, is special to your career arc. Um, but now coaching and advising uh, CEOs, obviously there's been a lot of lessons that you've learned uh, potentially uh, the hard way from the folks that you've worked with so as well as your own career. So talk a little bit about how you use those lessons uh, to help other CEOs. Yeah, great question, Rick. I think first and foremost is the power of a very compelling vision. Most of us are familiar with the Jim Collins term of the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. And I find a lot of CEOs that I talk to have, uh, you ask them what their BHAG is, and they'll throw out a number. A lot of times it's a financial number. I want to build a $100 million company. I want to build a billion-dollar company. But what I found over time, uh, and I, when I was a CEO, I had that same goal as well, a $100 million company. But what I found over time is that for the entire team, not just my leadership team, but the entire, all the team, right? All the way down to the front liners, the, that assembly line worker that I used to be, it's meaningless. You know, they, they're just like, oh, I'm just making, you know, the ownership rich, I'm making the top person rich. What I really find is that when the, that BHAG is translated to what I call a North Star, it's something that's bright and shining that everybody can look up to, be inspired by. And it, instead of us pushing up towards that goal, it, we get pulled towards it and it rallies the whole team. I think that's one of the most important lessons I, I've learned. I think the other thing is that it's a team sport. Business is a team sport. Uh, Shannon Susco would, would tell us the same thing. And um, if I always tell people, my CEO is that they, they think they're the smartest person in the room, they're in the wrong room. Not my quote, but uh, it's really true. We need to surround ourselves with the team. We need to empower them, hold them accountable. And when we do that, we build the right team and set out a strong goal for them. They can really accomplish some pretty incredible things. Yes, and uh, we heard that from Shannon in an interview that we did earlier, and I misspoke earlier uh, during our talk. So yes, it's Shannon Susco. Um, so Shannon will uh, provide a lot of folks with some, some great information. I know I've been in the room with some different events that you've led to, so people will have an opportunity to meet and interact with you. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, and I'm sure several of my companies are going to be there as well. Uh, you mentioned a couple of things. Uh, you mentioned three hag, and then you also mentioned the North Star way. So how does the North Star way um, help CEOs? And then how do they uh, translate that such that their leadership team can also develop that compelling long-term vision? Yeah. So um, difference with the North Star way is, is that focused on first and foremost, coming up with that North Star vision, that really thrilling, exciting North Star vision. And then backing that down into the three hag, which is not, it, the three hag is a three year highly achievable goal. And then backing that down into a one year highly achievable goal. So we're taking this, this vision that's very compelling, very emotional. It's like a, the ending of a movie. And it's a happy movie, by the way, Rick. And <laughs> bringing that back into an execution plan and then just consistently 
climbing those mountains up to that, that North Star vision. Um, and, and that's really the most powerful way that I found of coupling uh, that North Star imagination with the tangible st strategy of the three Hague way and then the execution back down to getting it done. Uh, so talk a little bit about some of the results that you've seen with companies who have used the North Star way. Obviously it has impacted you. Um, you're a firm believer. You've seen uh, the value uh, that companies have experienced, but give us a little bit of uh, detail uh, along those lines. Yeah, actually one of the uh, great example I have, and I just had breakfast with the CEO this morning of a local sporting goods company that uh, in their early sessions, we came up with a, a very compelling North Star vision for them. And, and for them, um, it was literally an Olympic vision. It was such a, they could take their company to such a level that they would eventually sponsor the US Olympic team in their sport. And that, that's been rallying the entire company ever since. And one of the things that CEO, CEO shared with me again today was that uh, at the start of the pandemic, for most sports, right? And this is a close contact sport. The year was canceled, right? We couldn't go out, we couldn't play sports. Kids couldn't, college teams couldn't, pro teams couldn't. And he would say, he would still tell you to this day that had it not been for the work we had done and having that vision and having a longer range vision that allowed him to really point out far into the future for the company and lead, his company might very well have gone under during that time period. And, uh, He's here today, the company's very successful, it's thriving, uh, and that's, that's been, been really rewarding for me. Sometimes um, kind of the strategic planning process uh, can be a little uh, dry for lack of a better word. You come yeah. up with some ideas, you whiteboard it, you wordsmith it, everybody agrees, and you walk out of that room all charged up, and then a week later uh, kind of goes by the wayside. Uh, not to say that that would ever happen with any of your companies, but you know, every once in a while, I've heard uh, some mm -hmm. of that stuff happen. So talk a little bit about um, kind of the process that happens after the company has created that compelling North Star vision. How do they actually get there? Yeah, great question, Rick. Um, that's again, coming back to that, that three hag strategy of then taking something that's very fuzzy, the North Star, but then backing down to that three-year horizon, because that's kind of like the next mountaintop we can see in. And then being able to build, in essence, if we're using this hiking analogy, what's the path to get there? And then combining with the team, who's going to do what along that path? And we call them a 36-month swim lane. So it's basically taking all your quarters out from today to that three hag and mapping out those activities along swim lanes. And you mentioned strategy, differentiator that I've really learned from the way I used to think about strategy is was I've learned from Shannon was that strategy is about differentiating the company. So it has a very unique, a very defensible and a very premium place in a market. And so those swim lanes are really aligning the team to work towards building the differentiators bringing those back then to a one-year executional plan and to the next quarter's executional plan. Mm -hmm. And part of my job as a coach uh, and the CEO is, is holding the team accountable to accomplishing those milestones along the way. And every year we reset that three-year highly achievable goal. Mm -hmm. That's a great distinction. That's helpful uh, to hear. Um, and then that feeds into uh, what are you going to do from an operating perspective what are the things you're going to do over that three-year period to, to make that happen? Um, I know on the execution side of things, a lot of companies use EOS these days. Mm -hmm. How is the North Star way different from EOS? Great question, Rick. Um, I love EOS. I've, I've used EOS in two of my companies. And um, when I found, first I found scaling up, I don't know if you're familiar with that system, uh, Burn Harnish. And which is actually where I first met Shannon was at a scaling up conference. Um, and now using Shannon's three hag way, the big differentiator going to the North star way is EOS is amazing for execution. It's great for getting stuff done. And um, it's also great for really for smaller companies, smaller teams who haven't developed that framework and the execution excellence. 
Uh, if I start working with an EOS company or former EOS company, it actually makes my job easier because we can build on that execution by building out this tremendous vision and the strategy to differentiate the company, which is one of the reasons why I chose to advance to the three hag way is because I really saw it was so much more powerful for a longer term vision for a company. And I think really allowing those companies to go from an entrepreneurial operating system to really a strategic framework and, and scale that company. And then um, once folks have made the decision to get on uh, this path, um, I'm always kind of curious to, to know uh, how people work and then also how do they get the teams involved. So tell people uh, in our audience, whether they're viewing or listening, um, do you work only with the CEO of the company? I work, I work with the CEO, but also with the CEO and their leadership team. So we will work together in annual planning sessions, quarterly strategy, strategy, strategy sessions, and then a cadence of meetings in between that are, are more executional in nature. But um, so it really is because like I said, Rick, it's a team sport. And so I'm there in the room with that CEO and the leadership team. At the same time as a coach, I'm there for that CEO. And I just like I had my breakfast this morning with the CEO, I am the one person who is not ownership, not above them, uh, I'm not one of their employees. The only reason I have success in my career is because they succeed and I'm the person in their corner. So I've, I've really found that the combination of those two is, is very powerful. Yeah, sounds powerful and exciting. Uh, sounds like uh, A, you've had a lot of success and B, uh, give uh, folks a path forward. So tell everybody a little bit about how CEOs and leadership teams can get started um, in creating their own North Star vision. Yeah, well, first and foremost, they can reach out to me directly. Uh, Rick, I think you already gave out my email number and I, we do have a website. Yeah, no, you might as well drop it again. People yep. pick up and listen. So give it to us one more time. Absolutely. So my email is Glenn, G-L-E-N, just one N, Dahl, D-A-L-L, so that's two L's, no H, uh, Glenn Dahl at apexnorthcoaching.com. Or they can check out our website, apexnorthcoaching.com as well. So that's one way, really reach out to me. I'd love to just have a conversation with CEOs, leaders, owners, uh, really anyone who's interested in learning more about the North Star Way. But also, Rick, as, as you know, is that um, my colleague, Jeff Redman and I, uh, Jeff's firm is called Breakthrough Impact Group. Um, on April 26th, we'll be hosting Shannon here as author. And I even brought a prop, the Three Hag White book. Uh, and Rick, I don't know if you had a chance to read Shannon's recent book, Metronomics. Uh, I, I actually, um, I'm involved with the work that Jeff does through the um, breakthrough impact group. And so, yes, that's our platform. And I know that that's something that you're involved with, uh, as well. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's really a great opportunity those breakthrough groups, um, for some smaller companies to really get into the process, get some coaching and leadership. And, um, the event's going to be amazing because anybody who comes, whether it's a CEO or CEO and their leadership teams is really going to get energized that day learn more about Shannon's three Hagway system and really leave with their own draft of a three-year highly achievable goal and the path to get there that day. That's great. Um, I'll, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I have, as I mentioned earlier, been in the audience when you and Jeff have done uh, sessions uh, in the past. And I know that uh, our audience uh, would benefit greatly from attending. So uh, please keep that in mind for those of you out there viewing and listening. All right, yeah. so <clears throat> question shifting gears just a little bit, Glenn. Some interesting things uh, along your, your career path. Um, obviously, starting where you did, getting to where you are, uh, interesting component. The fact that you were a publicly uh, traded company CEO, very unique, uh, small set of people that can check that box. Um, and then there's been a bunch of lessons um, along that journey. Is there any lesson that stuck out to you that you wish you would have learned a little sooner? Yeah, uh, a really, really strong one, Rick. Um, the one thing I learned when I did assume that CEO role, it's lonely at the top. And that's a cliche, people say it, but it's, it's true. 
there's a lot of responsibility there for the business, for the, the investors, um, for our customers. There's a lot, a lot of families, a lot of lobby that riding on it. And, and it's very lonely. And the one thing I wish I knew earlier is, is when we're in those really highly responsible leadership roles, get a coach, get someone who is on the outside um, and who's there to make sure that you as the leader, as the CEO succeed. I'd say that's, that's the biggest lesson. And then, so I'm curious, given that um, you got a bunch of CEOs leaning on you, uh, what have you done to build kind of your support system or how do you uh, keep recharged? Obviously, there's a hiking component and a biking component, but yeah. how do you keep uh, recharged and how do you keep from being kind of lonely at the spot that, that you're at? Yeah, I have a coach as well. So I'm, in, I'm involved in a, a mentor group of coaches actually worldwide. And that's really fantastic because we rely on each other, coach each other through, we hold each other accountable, which is a really key thing for a coach is to hold, right? We all need that. We all need to be held accountable. And we also need someone who's, who's not playing the game with us, but they're standing just outside, but they know, and they can point out some things that we could do better. And they also push us. They, they push us to do better, to strive and, and always, always go higher. Um, I love that. Well, given uh, the biking, hiking that you do, uh, yeah, I can see where that would be a great fit with uh, your personality. All right. So as we wrap up today and you think about the session that, that we've uh, just gone through, is there one key takeaway that you'd like our audience to take with them? Yeah, I would. The key takeaway for them is to really think about that long term vision and it needs to be driven by a true purpose. I have a client I work with that's an environmental restoration company. Uh, the true purpose we came up for them is that that company exists to heal the earth. And, and that's a powerful mission. And it, and it really it energizes me and makes me want to work with them all the more. Um, so that coupled with how much of the earth can we heal has really led them to, to build some pretty, pretty big goals. So that's, that's first and foremost is that is that is think about that compelling vision, build that out, make sure it's true and it, it aligns with your core values, uh, then bring that down into a strategy system. And of course, I'm, you've heard here, I'm a big fan of Shannon's Three Hagway. Um, that's what Jeff and I are certified in. That's what we use. And Rick, you're involved in those groups as well. You know, and then bring that down into the execution system and just make sure that you're holding your team accountable and empowering them to achieve on those goals that uh, are being built out from the strategy. All right. So a reminder uh, for everybody to check out Shannon's upcoming event. Uh, it's April 26th. To learn more about it, uh, her website is Metronome United, and that's spelled M-E-T-R-O-N-O-M-E, -E, Metronome United, hard to spit out, dot com. And yeah. the bit.ly link is three, the number three, now these are cap sensitive. So HAG is capital H, capital A, capital G. So three HAG and then lowercase boot camp. So the bit.ly again is three HAG, HAG is capitalized boot camp. And metronomeunited.com is the uh, website for Shannon. And Glenn, thank you very much for being here today. Um, I've said it a couple of times, say it again. I learned a lot from the sessions I've been in the audience. Uh, that you've uh, been involved in in the past. I'm sure this will be a great event. And thanks for your time and look forward to talking to you again soon. Rick, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you and Club E for supporting our event and also our sponsors, Highland Bank and Gray Search and Strategy. It's going to be a fantastic event. I can't wait for it. And I invite as many people who would, uh, would love to attend and build out their own vision in 3 Hague. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Take care. Bye, Rick. Yeah, see you. Bye-bye.